Period four, Spanish class. There was a knock on the door and the student told Mrs. Nowak that she had an emergency phone call down in the office. She panicked, put a student in charge of our class and ran out of the room. That must have been the way they still did things in Poland because Mrs. Nowak was part of the foreign teacher exchange program. I looked around the room, sensing the lack of authority. I had to make my move sooner or later to show the skaters what was up. The student put in charge of our class was a girl who spoke only when Mrs. Nowak called on her. Then she would always blush and whisper the correct answer. I had been waiting for a chance to make my move and now seemed to be it. Anybody ever read Lord of the Flies? I asked getting up and looking at the skaters. Yeah, sure, said Sonny. Sit your ass down, said Jonah. Nobody wants you to teach class. I read that last year in English and it sucked, said Ezra. Nah, it wasn't that bad, Flip admitted. Are you kidding? It was great. I climbed up on top of the tall radiator box so I could reach the sliding windows that ran high along the wall. There was no adults on the island, so all the kids went crazy. I stood up and looked out to see the view. Are you going to jump? Jonah laughed. Our classroom was on the second floor of our school building. Across the way were the sports concession stand and the football field bleachers. Since there were no screens on the large windows, I decided to look for things to throw out. First, I started small and threw out some pens, then moved on to the chalkboard erasers, and finally grabbed a box of Spanish audio tapes and began to chuck them out one at a time. The skaters looked at each other, not exactly knowing if they were impressed. I could tell I needed to do something more attention-getting, so after I ran out of tapes, I threw the tape player out too. The tape player bounced off of the concession stand's roof and shattered on the concrete below. I looked back at the class to see half of them grinning while the nerd girl and the others looked completely horrified. The skaters began to pound on their desks. Throw something else, a dark haired skater named Brody yelled. I did a little dance, spun around once, and then looked around for more things to throw. Lord of the Flies! Flies. I shouted and went for the box of Spanish VHS tapes. These were boring. I had to get rid of them. I threw the whole box out at once. Next, I unplugged the VCR. You don't have the balls, Flip said, but Sonny disagreed. No, he's going to throw it. Watch. That also shattered into 100 pieces below. Next, I threw out some textbooks, but they were boring in comparison, so I scanned the room and my eyes landed on the large globe. No, he isn't, laughed Sonny. That kid's crazy. I picked it up over my head, and Flip and Ezra jumped up and stood on the radiator so they could peer out of the window to get a better look. I carried the globe across the room, placed it on the windowsill. I climbed up, gave it a sho shove, and watched it hurtle down and then collapse like a giant egg on the concrete below. I jumped back down and snatched the dusty overhead projector out of the corner of the room and then chucked that out too. Meanwhile, in the science building across the courtyard, a class saw the many things flying out of her window. They started pointing to each other until the teacher noticed and got on the intercom with the main office, who must have figured out pretty quickly the classroom in question. I looked around the room for one last thing I could throw. I had actually picked it out from the beginning but hadn't worked up the guts until now. The class television was the right choice for the grand finale. Damn, Kelly, not the TV, grinned Sonny. Yeah, laughed Ezra. Whatever you do, Kelly, don't throw the TV. Oh, yeah? Give me a hand lifting it up, I said, and we carried it over to the radiator and set it down. The kids either gasped or cheered me on as I climbed up, picking it back up and placing it on the ledge of the window. I raised it off the ledge and then turned it sideways before tilting it through the opening and watching it drop. It fell fast and then exploded on the ground with a loud sonic boom. Holy shit, I exclaimed, hands covering my surprised face, momentarily scared of what I had actually done. Shit, they're coming, they're coming, Brody hissed, who had been playing lookout at the door. I slammed shut the window and we all hurried back to our seats just as a group of teachers, the assistant principal, and the principal bolted into our room looking around very panicked. The class sat dead quiet, almost frozen. The good kids held their breaths and stared down into their books while pretending to read. There was no sound but dead air. 
Not one, <laughs> not one kid turned the page or dropped a note on their blank worksheets. I sat there like the others. The adults were rather confused but slowly filed back outside and huddled together in the hall. From time to time, one returned to nervously peer back into the room, completely baffled as they whispered to each other. A moment later, our Polish exchange teacher bounded up the stairs, ran into the administrative group and froze. Her big blue eyes bulged and her curly hair never looked so tight. The adults scanned the room for any gesture that might give any one of us away. After a while, they left abruptly, all except for Mrs. Nowak, who took a deep breath and smoothed the front of her dress. Then she walked to the front of the room, trying to hide her horror as she proceeded with the lesson exactly where she had left off. The skaters stole glances at each other as the rest of the class pretended that nothing out of the ordinary had happened. No, someone had not just thrown half of the classroom out the window. When Brody caught Ezra's eye, the two of them began to crack up, then Sonny, and then Flip. Jonah refused to give in, staring blankly at Mrs. Nowak. He glanced back at me with a hard look until finally we both cracked up as Mrs. Nowak continued to ignore us. That day at lunch, Jonah motioned me over. Sit with us, Kelly. Yeah, that shit was off the hook, said Sonny. I can't believe you got away with that, Brody shook his head. They just act like it never happened. Never happened. That's how I roll. 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 Sean walked out of the school with his head thrown back, shoving his way through the crowd like he was eight feet tall. A little, a little nerd scurried in front of him, and Sean reached out and slapped him as he climbed onto the school bus. Ow. The dork rubbed his head, glanced back at Sean, but then slipped off the bottom step. Sean laughed. Have a nice trip? The little nerd scrambled up the steps and ran past the bus driver to grab a seat. Sean continued to laugh until I bumped into his shoulder. You better watch it. Sean lowered his eyebrows and tried to look tough. What are you gonna do about it? Hey, Sean, get in the bus and stop giving those kids hell. The fat bus driver laughed, scratching his beard and pushing back his long, greasy hair under his red bandana. I hate that kid. Sean flicked me off. Go get on your retard cart. Check this kid out, Dennis. He rides the handy van. Somebody get him a helmet. Dennis wheezed, his fat roll shaking with laughter as he bent over his steering wheel. I shoved Sean sideways and he fell against the bus. Hey! Dennis shouted. The kids jumped out of their seats and pressed their faces to the window as the bus driver began rocking his body, trying to wrench himself from behind the steering wheel. Hey! Dennis hollered. Hey, knock it off! Shut up, fat man! I barked as Sean jumped to his feet and started swinging. We moved along the side of the bus, trading punch for punch, clobbering each other as the kids stuck their heads out the windows and screamed. The other bus drivers blared their horns, trying to signal the school, but the bus attendants had already gone back inside the building. Dennis managed to free himself from behind the wheel and jumped down the steps, bouncing the bus up and down. I kept my fist doubled, fake left, and hit Sean with a right cross. Get him, Sean! Dennis sucked wind, and Sean fired a hook to my jaw. I danced backwards to stay on my feet with a ringing sound in my head. Hit him, Sean! When Sean glanced over his shoulder, I stepped on his foot and shoved him backwards. Hey, you! Dennis yelled. That's enough. You get over here. Hell no. Did you hear me? Get the hell over here. Uh-uh. I said and jogged through the diesel fumes of eight or nine buses waiting to depart. The further away I got from those who witnessed the scuffle, the better off I was. At the front of the bus line, I boarded the van where a red-faced driver, horse-faced, wailed, What the heck is going on back there? She stared at me cross-eyed, her short black hair in spit curls. Beats me, I shrugged, a fight or something. She jerked her head back and forth, twisting to look out the window behind her. What's with all the hawking? She waves her hands at the bus driver behind her. Jesus, all right already. She put the van into gear and then led the bus procession out of the school parking lot. You want me to slap your fucking teeth out? 
A football player with tobacco dip shoved into his lower lip, twisted my shirt into a knot, and then lifted me off the ground like I was a bag of potato chips. You think I'm going to let you get away with that? Behind him were the banners for Friday's big game. Go Bobcats. Kill the Wolves. Get away with what, I asked. You think you could rough up my little brother? He shot in my face with his putrid, chewing tobacco breath. You got nothing to say now. Who, Sean? Yeah. He's a piece of shit who picks on midgets. Mark knocked my head back against the wall. Whip his skinny ass, Mark, and let's go to lunch. I'm starving. His friend, a big, bald footballer, said. Mark twisted my shirt into a tighter knot. Let's see how tough you are outside. The bell rang and students filed out of the gym with two coaches behind them. Mark dropped me onto my feet. What the heck is going on here? A woman coach shouted, twirling a whistle on a lanyard. Mark grinned embarrassedly. Nothing, nothing, I swear to God. Yeah, what the hell is this, Mark? The man took off his sunglasses. Do you want to miss another game? Hey, Coach Wilson, I, uh, we were, I was, uh, he stammered. You all right, kid? The woman coach asked me. Yeah, good, then beat it, she said. He's fine, Coach Denver. Baldy tried to smooth her with a smile. We were just messing around with the stupid freshman. Come on. Sure you were, Denver said.